Welcome to another edition of Tampa Bay Insiders, where we try to profile some of the movers and shakers in town and get you to get to know them better. Today we have with us, very fortunately, former commissioner, former everything, lots of things, for former city council person, chair of, I don't know, I think I counted, I lost county after about 30 or something, uh, various agencies, Jan Platt. Welcome, Jan. Well, thank you, Louise, and congratulations. You are a survivor, and you come out in spades. It's just, uh, I'm so glad that... Uh, We're still here? Well, that public access is a well and live and continuing to inform the community. Congratulations. Thanks, Jan, but we're hanging on by a thread, and we hope everybody hears you and sends money. Uh, we are the last public access center in the state of Florida. Oh, that is We're sad. the last one. And in the last five years, and I don't want to digress into that too much, but the show's about you and not us, but in the last uh, five years, I think USA uh, News did a story in uh, about six or ten, eight months ago, that in the last several years, 600 access centers across the country have closed. They closed 10 of them at one time in LA, and Ed Asner went on the, uh, uh, you know, on the uh, 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 bandwagon to get them back because the cable companies were still running them and the cable company just shut them down. Well, and public it's, access is so important. It, it tr it's an, a training ground for, for young people to learn how to uh, produce programs and use, mm -hmm. the, use the cameras and all. That, that, that isn't offered at the other TV stations. And then there's the opportunity, too, for points of view to be expressed that uh, are not being the expressed. the foundation of our democracy. Absolutely, can. absolutely. So, um, and you know, I think there isn't a soul here who doesn't know how much you watched out for public access while you were in a position to do so, and that how we lost out once you uh, term limited out of the commission and money got moved, and they pretend that it's uh, general revenue money and so forth, so it's crazy. But we'll get back to that at the end of this. Let's talk about you. Um, first of all, you were raised right in this area, correct? Yes, I was born in St. Petersburg. Uh -huh. And um, for the first four years of elementary school, I lived in Lakeland. And oh. then after World War II, then I lived in Tampa and Seminole Heights. Oh. And went to Broward. My neighborhood. Yeah, Broward Memorial in Hillsboro. So you're a product of this whole area, so you yes. grew up with it pretty much. Yes. And then you went to college? Uh, Florida State University. Florida State in Tallahassee. Mm -hmm. And what were you studying when you went there? What was your interest at, originally when you went I, I studied uh, political science and public administration. Oh. When I was a senior at Hillsborough High School, mm -hmm. uh, Seminole Legion Post 111 uh, appointed me to go to Girls State. And so I fell in love with government when I went to Girl State. Girl State, I yes. don't know it. Is that's, it, is that's it renamed? A, no, it, oh. I think it's still in existence. Uh, it's a program where college students go up to Tallahassee and... Um, high school, high school students. Uh, yeah, high school students go to Tallahassee and uh, learn about government and state government. So you're like pages or gophers no, no, or what no, are no, you? No, 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 no. It's just because education. It's educational. And, and then we're elected. I, I was elected to the Supreme Court. We're elected to the various offices. And then we, I, I sat on the Supreme Court, you know. I mean, it's a wonderful opportunity for young people to sort of get a glimpse of um, how government operates at the state level. I and see I'm, you went on to, I never knew you went to law school. I did. I was the only woman in the law school at Florida. <laughs> that was not a happy Just occasion. Just absolutely unbelievable. I didn't realize. But so you didn't complete no, and I, go get a, a law degree. No, I did not. Um, you know, when I was, I was vice president of the student... I guess sitting in, at high school in, at the Supreme Court would make you interested in being a lawyer. Yes. Yeah. It was. Uh -huh. and, um, and then when I went to the University of Florida to law school, I was... It's no fun being the only woman in the whole school. Did you get a lot of dates, though? <laughs> <laughs> you can't date in law school because you've got so much to study. Oh, okay, right, so it's right. sort of uh, the only <laughs> woman. Yes, and it was the and, the and and in my class was the first black to be admitted to the to the university system. 
And what is interesting is when I was a, when I was a senior at FSU, I was vice president of the student body at FSU, mm -hmm. um, Leroy Collins and, oh. and Dean Strozier, who was the president, and Strozier's dad, who is here at USF now, mm -hmm. um, appointed three of us to go to the University of North Carolina to find out how they had integrated their university system peacefully. And what we and found... And that was just integration of blacks or yes, women too? No, that was just blacks. Okay. And what we found at University of North Carolina is that they admitted um, a mature male student who had a family. And so that's what we recommended to Governor Collins. And um, so... Instead as, of a young man or a be, young Because woman. you think back in those days, if they had sent... If, if they had integrated at the freshman level, it would have been probably bloodshed. Yeah. I mean, our state fought integration tooth and nail. And um, it wasn't until Collins came on board that uh, they became enlightened. But uh, anyway, uh, so the... What the, year is that now? That was, that was, uh, no, no, that no, was 19, six? no, uh, 1958, 59. Wow. Okay. And so um, the first black um, was admitted and he was, a, he was, uh, had, was married and had several children. And so we, we, I was sort of proud that uh, the state had followed our advice. But he and I lasted one year. He didn't make his grades and I, I made my grades, but I decided I didn't like the grief. Yeah, so you went on to another school? No, uh -huh. I came back to Tampa and I taught at Hillsborough High School. Oh, you were a teacher? Mm -hmm. I taught American history, and, um, but then I decided I really didn't want to do that, so I became a, a professional Girl Scout and was a field director for the Girl Scouts for several years. Oh, wow. And as fate would have it, I had the only, only integrated Girl Scout troop in the county. And you know where that troop was? Where? MacDill Air Force Base. Oh, wow. And that was interesting to try to get, to work through integration with a volunteer organization so like that. So where the children were integrated than the, the service was at that time yet or not? I guess it was. It was. Yeah, children are always better at mm -hmm. these things, mm -hmm. I think, than adults are. Mm -hmm. They don't come with all the mm -hmm. biases or anything, unless mm -hmm. somebody digs them in their head or mm -hmm. something. But, um, okay, so you were teaching before you went into public service? Or did yep. you go do something else? Or wait, oh. you were teaching and then you were in the Girl Scout uh, leadership? Yes, uh huh. And then um, I went to, uh, then I decided I was going to go to um, graduate school, so I went to the University of uh, Virginia Graduate School. Ah, and beautiful place to go, is that? The yes, greatest? it is beautiful. Um, but I had met my husband. Um, he was a, he was with Strategic Air Command out at McDill Air Force Base mm -hmm. and was a pilot uh, with B-47s. And so um, that was when the Cuban Missile Crisis occurred when I was up at University of Virginia. Wow. And uh, anyway, he and I decided to get married. And uh, so I dropped out of University of Virginia and we got married and uh, we moved to Plattsburgh, New York, where he was... Uh, with Strategic Air Command for several years. That's an interesting play on his last name. Yeah. <laughs> was Was there anybody in Plattsburgh related to Platt? No, I don't think oh, okay, so. Okay, all right. He's from so Kentucky. He's from Kentucky. Okay, so you're in Plattsburgh, New York. That mm -hmm. was a, a big change, I suppose. Mm -hmm. They had one day of summer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kid. yeah. Or and, and 50 <laughs> inches of rain, uh, snow know. every day, right? Right. Um, so what did you do up there? Did you work? No. Okay. Um, I. Uh, I was on the board of the Girl Scouts up there, and uh, oh, I did I did substitute teaching and that sort of thing. When did you get to go to Vanderbilt? I went to Vanderbilt when he dropped when he got out of the service. Um, he decided to go to law school, and he went to univer uh, to Vanderbilt. And so um, I decided that uh, I would work on a graduate degree there. So what were you going for? Political science, too? Political science. Uh -huh. And so uh, I went one semester, but then I, I became expectant with our son. Mm -hmm. So uh, I didn't finish. Time. Yeah, I dropped out uh -huh. <laughs> to be a good mom. Okay. So w so you were in Plattsburgh and then came back down to Tampa? No, went to Vanderbilt. Went oh, to you Nashville. went to Vanderbilt first. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then when he graduated from Vanderbilt in law school, uh, we came back to Tampa. 
okay. In case your roots were here. Mm -hmm. And his and he his weren't though. His were in Kentucky. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're back in Tampa raising Kevin. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you suddenly say, okay, now what I'm going to do is uh, run for city council? My younger sister, um, who was very talented, and um, she was a Phi Beta Kappa, and uh, had all kinds of opportunities as a young woman, uh, had cancer, and that was in the '60s. And I'll tell you, there's nothing worse than to have a loved one younger um, and watch them slowly pass away and then fight for life. I know about this story. And um, I watched, and um, she passed away on March the 4th of 1974. And then a couple of weeks later, Dick Greco resigned from office oh, as mayor. Oh, his first term as mayor. Yes, in 74, and there were all these seats on city council. And so after I became committed that life is short and you've got to do what you were trained to do. And so that's why I ran for office and I really dedicated my uh, career to, to her memory because I'm not sure I would have ever gotten the courage to run for office. I'm not the outgoing kind of person that likes to stand on street corners or, uh, you know, just get up and get into these issues, but... But you back uh, those of us who'd like to. Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> so that's the most important thing. But that, that's what uh, really motivated me, so... Uh, your sister did, so you're yeah. all, So you almost attribute your career to her? Mm -hmm. that's I do. Wonderful. You know, and, and Ruben Askew, um, uh, she, she was the singer for all of his inaugural balls. You remember, he was the only governor who had his inaugural balls throughout the state. Oh, I remember reading about Pensacola that. Pensacola yeah. and Tallahassee, Tampa, Miami, Jacksonville. He made sure everybody could come. Which was so great. And yeah. no other governor has done that since. But she was the singer for all of those occasions, which I thought was so great, too. Fabulous. Yes. So how long were you on city council? Uh, four years. Was that two terms at that no, time that or was, one no, term? that was one term. Sandy Friedman and I and Charlie Miranda all ran the same time. I kid, I kid and say we're the class of 74. Oh, that was the first time all of us ran. And um, there was already a woman on city council, and that was Catherine Barja. Oh. And uh, so anyway, and Bill Poe was mayor. But um, after serving uh, four years on city council, I decided that I would run for county commission. City council, see, I'm the kind of person uh, who questions well, and we heard that. <laughs> I just we never know that. I never took things, you know, I, I mean, I, I would study the issues and I would question everything. And on, in this city, <clears throat> in city council, you get disliked pretty quickly for constantly and doing pretty, that. And you're pretty powerless, too, aren't well, you? Yeah, you are. I mean, but, but, but I was powerful government. because I would always show them up with, I would always point out why whatever they were proposing wasn't a good idea. Because, okay. you know, they come up with these things and they just expect you to pass them, and I'd say, no way. And, and that's so, how you got to be known as Commissioner, Commissioner No. no. <laughs> right. Because okay. I, I always believed that a well-articulated no is every bit as powerful as a yes vote. And so I would always point out why I was voting no, so that all those who voted yes could either read it in the paper the next day or think about it next time. So. Very anyway, good. so I, I ran for county commission in 78. And you won? I won. And you stayed on there. Until 2004. Getting, kept getting reelected, so you served how many years of that? Uh, 24. 24 years. Mm -hmm. Isn't that fantastic? That is a, that's quite a run. Really. Well, and it was during the development period of the county because it, when I came on board, it was rural. And the city was heavily populated, but there were not people out in the county to any extent. And so it was, it was really a challenge. Were it you was, county wide at that yes, time? Yes, I was yeah. always county wide. I would Which not, is a hard election to win. Yeah, it is, but it, it, it keeps you alert and you know what all the issues are because you get out and you talk to everybody. And Jan, weren't you on that board when most of those people got arrested? Yes, yes. I, I, well, that must have been a devastation to be sitting on that board and watch uh, how many, three or four? Uh, three. three. 
uh, be carted off to uh, jail. I, I, I became the chairman of the smallest commission in the, <laughs> the history of the county. <laughs> oh my God! Uh, they didn't. Those didn't prompt new elections. They were appointees that were uh, yes. replaced them all, right? Yes. Which was Bob another, Graham. Bob Graham appointed. Uh, which was another interesting thing. What do you think the biggest issues then were with the county back when you were on it? Um, you said it became this. It was more of a rural county, so there must have been a number of issues. Yes, dealing with growth and de dealing with the new subdivisions and then dealing with alternative ways to pay for the infrastructure uh, to support that growth. Because when I first got on the Board of County Commissioners, there were 80,000 septic tanks in unincorporated Hillsborough. Because uh, what does that mean? That means that all of those houses out there yeah. were scattered and they couldn't be connected to a sewer plant because there weren't that many to have sewage. So uh, it meant de developing a, a sewer system for the county that would meet requirements. It meant uh, developing a, a water supply, uh, a means to handle garbage. I mean, it was, it was, it was building. Tremendous. Yes, over a widespread area. Where you might have some farms, tomato and yes. strawberry and mm -hmm. so forth, and you'd have, or groves, and so it'd be miles before you got to another uh, home or anything, right? right? And so that, that's why they'd be on septic tanks. That's why I've been sort of upset when I saw recently that um, uh, the governor of the state was contemplating eliminating uh, checks on septic tanks, because obviously he does not understand the dynamics, because if you have a septic tank, nine times out of ten, you have a, a well that's on your property, right, too, right. that's not very deep because you can't afford to dig it very deep. So you want to make sure that your septic tank is not leaking. Uh, into so the aquifer. You are leaking into your well. So that's why it's oh. important to check those septic tanks on a regular basis. Now, luckily, uh, Governor Scott has backed off of that idea, so I think somebody explain to him what the consequences would be if he did that. But anyway, um, those are some of the things we had to deal with. And, and the library system, for instance, uh, that I was so involved with. Uh, and they even named a library after you, which is oh, just the most wonderful honor among what you probably had four dozen different awards and honors for different groups, especially the environmentally mm -hmm. concerned groups, the Audubon and Sierra. and lots of different groups that you have uh, for watching out for environment. Well, see, I grew up with my dad. We, it was my sister and I, and my dad is a native of Florida, and he loved to fish, and he loved to crab, and he loved to scallop, and so I was his sidekick. And so every, No boys? Uh, no boys. Okay. So he and I would go out every weekend and fish and crab and scallop. So I grew up very familiar with this whole bay and um, with uh, the water on the, on the coastline, too. Are you a fisher person oh, to absolutely. this day? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Do you go out now? Well, I, mean, I haven't recently because of my illness. I thought one of the most wonderful things that we didn't mention earlier was the fact that you and Charlie Miranda co-hosted or alternated hosting a show on our channels called Talk to Your Government. Mm -hmm. And what was really clever about that, or good for the for her viewers, is to bring, you brought on different agency heads or department people, and you let it be a call-in show, and you heard comments from viewers directly and answered questions or had a person there to, hand, to answer them. You did that for quite a while. Yes, and it was so much fun. Because, and I was surprised at the number of people that would call in. And they all had good questions. And, uh, Told you how to run City Hall or, pardon the expression, yeah, County Center. Yeah, they, 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 that was, I don't know if you have anything similar to that now. No, we really don't. And uh, the, the only person I would say, in fact, I proposed that to the county commission, given that they got rid of their town hall it's meetings. Not, it's maybe. never too expensive to hear from the public. Well, they said <sighs> that was too much for them to do. So I said, why don't you do a talk to your commissioner, borrowing from mm -hmm. your, the name of your show, mm -hmm. talk to your commissioner series, and rotate the commissioners. Mm -hmm. And if one commissioner isn't comfortable with that atmosphere, he can just rotate out and sure. just move it along. 
and then take the calls and answer the questions mm -hmm. and bring on people. And mm -hmm. I'd always use the model of you and Charlie Miranda doing mm -hmm. that because I thought that was really a great idea. Well, great they, idea. Did, they, they, they didn't. No, they didn't bite. What a shame. I mean, not that they didn't. A couple of them didn't think it was a good idea. They were afraid that by supporting it that um, it, it would look like an unnecessary expenditure given how tight the budgets are because it's TV, you know. But then again, it's also a way to uh, fill in the communications gap that between the, the folks who can't get out, you know, we're, we're great for the people who are shut-ins or can't get to a meeting and learn something else about it. But uh, So you went off the board, I guess, uh, is that 2004? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and we were sorry about that. I can tell you that. <laughs> Didn't you, but you came back, no wait, you no. went, that's when you went off and then, no, you I went off before and then came back on. That was back in 96, 95. I was off for two years. Uh, in and that you were back then just I in time back. for us to take over the channels, I think. Yeah, uh, and I was, so I was off in two years. I don't remember which of those two years yeah. because of term limits. Right. Um, and then uh, since you've been off, you've still been involved. You got involved with this charter review, did you not? And yes, a few uh, other things? Mm -hmm. I chaired one of the one of the boards of charter review and then I was on it this last year. And then I still continue to be on the agency on Bay Management, uh, so that I still am able to keep an eye on what's happening in the Bay. And and ironically I represent the recreational anglers. So oh, <laughs> ironic. There's yeah, nothing ironic about that. And I and I don't hesitate to uh, to research those issues and uh, ask tough, tough questions and make motions that we take tough action. Oh, that is really fantastic. <laughs> so I'm still there. We're, we've, we're, we're down to like five minutes, which I think is horrible. But um, I wanted to ask you, uh, given, I don't know, I guess our entire economic times are not good and there's been a lot going on with uh, the loss of services and agencies. We just did a program at Athena that you missed this last uh, last week about how even women and children are most affected by cutbacks um, uh, because those are the 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 folks whose whose funding's been cut. You know, a lot of those agencies. Where do you think um, what do you think we should be doing or looking at or what should viewers be concerned about at this moment in time and how can we make a difference? It's a big question. That's a big question. Um, I think, first of all, we need to encourage good people to run for office who really um, are community-minded rather than uh, just concerned about the lobbyists and the people who pay the bills. Because if, they, if, you, if you get people in office who look at the whole community and believe the idea that they are public servants, then I think they will find solutions to some of this. But unfortunately, we have so many people now in office who are divisive and uh, who uh, really march to the orders of uh, those people who contribute. Party leadership or money. To the money, to the money who, who uh, contributed to them. And that's sad because a lot of that money comes from uh, groups that have uh, loopholes for their taxing so that they're in some instances are not paying the taxes that they should. So um, I think that we need to look for all the loopholes that are out there and close them. I saw something on TV the other night about they had a long list of, of major Wall Street firms that don't pay any taxes. And I was shocked because everybody, it ought to be fair and square for everybody and I, I would hope that uh, those in office would look to make sure that it is in fact fair and square. One of the things of my concern right now is that a lot of the requirements on developers are being erased and what I mean is that the requirements that they build the, the sewer plants to their place or the roads to their the places. The infrastructure. The infrastructure. And so <clears throat> if they don't pay for it then you and I are going to pay for it right. through higher taxes and then they're going to fire some people in the, in the public service because they've got to get that money somewhere and so the best way is to let them go. So it's a vicious circle. I think they just need to learn how to be fair to everyone. I, uh, we had in here recently 
an unnamed female Florida senator. And uh, she happened to say that when she got in office, she thought she could make some real serious changes. But since she's been in, she's watched how the lobbyists and the big paying companies are able to make the decisions. Because the media is there, and they will pick up on it. And um, we have less media. We've had well, media mergers and craziness. And I know. How do you get your voice out? Well, I mean, and, really. And see, that's why your station is so important, and why it's so important for those commissioners to step up and say, "Yes, we'll have a program," so that we I can hear from the public. I think we should offer you another show. <laughs> because they ought to be speaking up. They ought to give Maybe these. you and Daryl would come on together. Well, you, you know what? He was my Sunday school teacher when I was in high school. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, we did a show at Terrell Sessoms, and both of you uh, can give histories of the various things that have gone on in the community and some support and advice with direction that I don't think we're getting elsewhere. Well, I, mean, right I, have, now. I have a great deal of respect for Terrell because, again, he was, my, he, he was my Sunday school teacher. When he was in law school at the University of Florida, he would come home every Sunday to teach our Sunday school class. So I have a great deal of respect for him. Wow, he's a committed guy. Yes, he is. He really is. Yes. And he was a, uh -huh. also a big supporter and an early person in the battle to get uh, the access channels for the public. I know that because he... I didn't know it until he got here and I was reading his resume mm -hmm. and said, oh my God, you know the whole early history of this. So we need to encourage people to get involved. We really appreciate, Jan, all your support of our station, but also our environment, keeping uh, growth managed better than uh, we've seen it managed in the past. Thank you so much for being with us, Jan. We really appreciate all your support and everything you've done for public access, the environment, all of us residents, women and children, <laughs> and uh, we appreciate all that. Hope you'll be back and do a show on our channels again sometime. Uh, thank you all for uh, watching, and we hope to see you next time. Hi, I'm Police Chief Jane Castor, and you're tuned into Tampa Bay Community Network.